<sighs> LFYs turn to ban. Dire team ban. LFYs turn to ban. Dire team ban. Welcome back to the Perfect World Masters live from Shanghai. Uh, we're back prematurely, perhaps a little bit earlier than planned, but that's because the players have decided that the draft is something they wanted to get into. So we're going to drop you into it right away uh, alongside our panel members. Um, I just want to just quickly highlight as well with you guys, we've just got news in our ears that Kingwin have won the opening game against Newbie. They... That's a bit of a surprise, frankly. It is. Um, it's a European team that I think not a lot of people would be familiar with. Um, I had the pleasure to cast a lot of their qualifiers coming into this. Yeah, I hear you're an honorary Polish citizen now. I, I love it. That's uh, <laughs> Sure, why not? I'm happy to do it, man. I've been to Poland before. It's a beautiful country. It is. Um, but I think that a lot of people wouldn't be expecting it, but they are no. an incredibly talented team, and beating the you know TI runner-up, it's not a bad way to show up it's on your great, first land. It? Yeah, we'll see whether they get maximum points. It's over on the second stream if you want to have that in dual side by side glorious dota 2 action uh, as we come live from shanghai uh, first pick in this time round the ogre has returned for complexity so this is a hero that they banned uh, in the first game that that lfy has picked uh, quite a bit and a hero that's back to increasing in popularity and so they're going to go take that away yep. Uh, they've banned the wisp this time as well so they may have beaten them but they were still annoyed by it oh now it's their turn Oh man, okay. I really like this opening from LGD Forever Young. Whoa. Um, immediately uh, into this. Okay. So, so the tiny Omni are just, it's kind of like, you know, what are the most disgusting heroes in this pack so far? <laughs> and that's, that's what they've decided to go with here at the, the start. Um, and then the Razor, we've seen, we've seen Razor a lot against like Omni Knight, um, or just against some of these melee cores. He just makes the lane very difficult to deal with. So. Um, when you pick that razor, I mean, you're already thinking like, you know, it's probably gonna, he's probably gonna get a good lane matchup somewhere. Yeah. Or wherever he goes. So yeah, I think even the construction staff here at the arena mm. were were surprised by that tiny Omni Knight. They uh, probably heard that in the background. They're falling yeah. over. They can't handle they're it. They're just falling off of the ladders. Um, and then an ogre razor, and it was an instant razor as well for for Cole. I think that they were expecting this opening, maybe. Like, yeah. I think that when you play against people this much, you start to, like, build up that anticipation of what's going to happen. I think Razor's pretty good against Omni Knight as well, because if you go for, like, a solo GA, you can purge that off with his passive. Uh, those things start to work, and, of course, just stealing damage away is pretty solid as well. So I, I like the opening, I think, though, for LGD Forever Young a little bit more. It's more, like, strong meta heroes. Well, again, you know, going back to that theme that teams always have, right? Like, in a lot of ways, the meta is what the stronger teams are picking and winning with. So you develop that own style, people have to react to you, you then become the ones who define the meta. And that's, I think that's the ideal hope for every team to reach as we see uh, their Inflame and Afu. What a bunch of cool guys. They all, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they all got fined for that uh, super instance. The super got docked a month's pay, and I think everyone else... Plus, like, the managers and, like, the coach lost, like, a half month's pay or something in that instant. So what was it that exactly happened? Because I know he, like, he GG'd out because he was upset, right? Yeah, so, so they went to it. They weren't together on land. They went to, like, a different location because I think I was applying for um, the Macau visa to be able to... It's not really a visa, but, like, you need a, you need a pass if a you're in China pass, to get right. to... So they're applying for that and they're separated and you know they got really tilty and upset and they just gg would out. And then, you know, LGD came out and was like, we've got to announce some fines and then yeah, you know, that's that's what the punishments ended up being for that. Hmm. Well, they ban out the Quap, the Storm, those mobile mid heroes. Um, I'm kind of interested to see if LGD Forever Young want to take the uh, the tiny to a different lane. I don't think that they want to run at mid personally. I, I think. Monet, I think I've seen him actually play it a couple of times, uh, like a year ago or something. Uh, which one, sorry? Uh, Monet. I could be wrong about that. Monet playing what, sorry? Tiny. Um, it might. It maybe. wouldn't have been recently. No, Five definitely. Like, remaining. last three months, not anything in... current set. But Witch Doctor also taken. I like this hero. I don't know if it's going to be... Uh, it's sort of weird because they don't know what the offlane hero is, but Witch Doctor is pretty much able to zone out anybody uh, as long as he's got some decent help there. Just really the, strong laning hero. Yeah, they usually play it as a 5. LFY's turn to Enchantress. Oh. 
So this is another, I don't know, not just region, but almost, almost I feel like an NA special in, in recent months at least. You've seen people CIS use it. CIS sh shuffle. Oh, that's right. That's right. VP, C my, 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 my. CIS always in charge of this. Do you see it against like Vipers or something Five like that for a little remaining. bit? And uh, in this case, again, like, I don't know, maybe this is, the, you're seeing like different answers to Tiny, right? Or different solutions to Tiny, maybe either as support or a core in one of the lanes. And maybe this is one of them as well. I mean, if anybody would know what it would be, it would be Limp. That's for sure. That guy plays it all the freaking time. Um, but uh, I think Enchantress seems pretty good here. Um, I would imagine this would be a Z Freak hero. And then you start running around afterwards, try and gank mid a couple times. They could end up running at Moo also. Um, who is it that's been playing Enchantress all over the place in NA recently? they playing it offlane. Uh, oh, no, are you thinking of like Mason I'm thinking of something? General, actually. No, it's, it's Navi who's playing it a lot. Yeah, oh, CMS again. Yeah. So, a slider. Okay. It's a pretty good natural synergy. Um, he also offers, like, if you have a super defensive support like Witch Doctor, and then you have an offlaner who also really isn't like a... Like that sort of a tempo like uh, initiator then you want something like that usually in your lineup otherwise it becomes very unbalanced so having starter who can fill that role and then you have the synergy as well so it's a solid pick up there are they going to be able to punish or like try and go for a dual lane type of thing at all because it doesn't feel like it's that like easy to try and contest an ogre's lane if ogre just runs mid and makes sure that uh you know whoever's there has a really good time I don't know, I'm trying to figure out like what the Slarder is going to do early game. Because he's going to be going against like either a Razor in the safe lane, or probably an Ogre sitting mid. I don't really know if Slarder is going to do that much early. Uh, it could be part of a strong duo. If you have him with like the Omni Knight, and the, the safe lane is like, a, their lane they're up, they're up against is a bit weak. It's actually pretty bullying to have those two together. Time we would just... Dire yeah, team I so. Maybe they'll go next level and just like anchor smash mid against Tiny. What did you make of his tusk in the last game, by the way? I didn't like the meteor hammer. <laughs> no one liked that. The most no. polarizing no one item liked that. No, no one, no one in the room liked that anyway. Yeah. What are you going to do? Bash heroes? But his early game was amazing. Yeah. That was really solid. Uh, a couple of his rotations with the shards and everything felt very, very strong. Yeah. Um, but just, yeah. It just... became very ineffective towards the end. Yeah. Late game. I'm like, he was level 11 when the PA was 8. He was up there yeah, with the... Uh, yeah. I, mean, I think that, that I mean, Cat was sat next to me and he said, it's very rare that he would look at a game and go, yeah, moves, moves the issue here, yeah. right? Because at points he was, and he, weird, because he's such a reliable player. Well, and I didn't want to like hate on it too much, because I think the idea with the hand of Meteor Hammer was like, all right, we want to be able to help take those towers a little bit quicker, but I did feel like he kind of, it became a bit of a, not a liability, but that he wasn't able to do as much saving as they might have wanted. TA taken. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of heroes that we... Some real mix of heroes here, though, for complexity. Not the kind of popularist heroes that we're used to seeing. Ten seconds. They don't have many stuns. Like, they have just basically Fire Blast, which isn't Five that great. Seconds remaining. Um, I mean, I guess if they're not very effective against Tiny, then it's okay. But I, I kind of feel like I really like LGD for every Young's Draft. That buffed trap damage, though. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think DP's a great pick here. It, he, Razor's probably just going to get eaten alive later on. I don't know. I think, that, I think LGD for every Young has this. I really like their draft. And it's Monet Tiny again. I think Razor, Razor used to be seen as a decent matchup uh, against uh, against Death Prophet, but in this case, I mean, I think the Razor will have a decent matchup. It's going to be hard for them to be able to find these fights unless they can get to five man early. And like, you know, again, this, that's what this team does probably more as like a signature preference than almost anybody else. So they're going to need to do that. They're going to have to find a lot of tempo with the Enchantress. They're going to have to push behind the tide early on if they want to win this game. You still fancy LFY to take this in too? I think so. After watching game one. I think uh, I think LFY handles the details very well. Um, I think 
well, I, I don't want to say this like as a region in general, but again, like these teams are very polished, uh, just in general, like Chinese teams compared to some of the. Are teams you saying be... North American <laughs> teams aren't Jack? <laughs> well, like, maybe I don't know. You're it's, tearing maybe his it's heart a little away. bit inconsistent sometimes. <laughs> he's he's on a North American team. He's on a North American team, and then he's like from China. He's like you know, it's his parents choosing between in a divorce yeah, or something. Yeah, he's kind of stuck there a little bit, isn't he? Like we'll, we'll pull him yeah, apart afterwards. Uh, uh, time to hand you over to our commentary team for game number two. Complexity down by a game, but not all is lost because a draw would mean the team split the points. Let's find out how it get on in game number two. Well, it's so obvious now, Blitz. Obviously, the rust-covered Americans are incapable of winning this game, and LFY will take game two. What? I, I don't agree with that. Mainly because you just called the, what, rust-covered Americans? <laughs> Yeah? Hey, I, I, I'm just listening to our analyst desk, man. That's that's what Jack was going for. Jack said that, man. <laughs> I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're watching. Well, we can get our tetanus shots later as America can get cured. Uh, complexity. Seconds to battle. Dude, this Br is bringing in the Enchantress, bringing in the Tide, bringing the new and improved Templar Assassin. Okay, not that improved, but... It's kind of cool. The bonus damage from the traps is, like, it's cute. It's that, uh, it's the timing as well, right? Timing to actually get to max. Yeah. I think they got, uh, that also got changed. I actually haven't played the new TA yet. The battle but you begins. haven't had really that many opportunities to. No, it's Patch on the came out last night. Already a bit of a rune contest. As Mu and Kyle try and force him out, but LFY win the three bounty rune game at least. There's one bounty room left. Oh. Yeah, it, <laughs> Kyle's coming back for it. That's crazy that tree grab doesn't cost uh, that much mana. Like, only 20? That's nothing. Would you like to nerf it? Uh, That's not like having an Agonyms at level 1, right? Yeah, it's not the same. That's oh. mid. Super. This is, like, pretty trademark for him. If there's a hero that I associated with him aside from his DK, it's his DP. The D heroes. And Inflame is really pulling this creep wave hard, Z Freak. Can't chase it much further. Oh, there's Tree Toss. And the Bellum will be cracked in the bottom lane. That is <laughs> an unexpected first blood, especially since Tidehunter, like one of the tankier offlingers, but he has Gush level one. So no Kraken shell, no tank. That's how he's trying to work. Like, they are pretty, pretty, like, well, I don't want to say. They're big bones on that bottom lane with the two heroes, Kyle and Mu, together. Yeah, but they don't have that tankiness yet on that Tidehunter. Like, it's not through his stats, which are pretty good. I mean, 600 HP is nothing to sneer at. But this Tiny's rocking 900, Toby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> He's a real hero, you know? Like... Oh, the tree toss. That's gotta hurt. Just getting a giant tree tossed into your face every so often. Yeah, you know, this this way you need the Timbersaur against the tiny. Nah. Just take away the trees. What you should be able to do is like um there should be an option to oh. eat the tree in the air. Like tango it. If you're really <laughs> fast. <laughs> Are you gonna go for like a skill grab on the tree? Yeah, if you're if you're that's how you take Dota to the next level. It's like if you if you really want to be skilled, you should give people the ability to just like tango. Well, that's, that's when you have like crawling blades. Like you, you're, you're trying to recreate like an action sequence, like with with Wolverine, where you just like pop your claws out and just like slice it in two when it flies at you. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I mean, it wouldn't be probably like realistic and stuff. But it's like, come on, what's realistic about this game? Like, a tiny man is like holding up a tree and like chucking it at people after using it as like a weapon a few times. Anything's possible. Yeah, there's so many things in this game too, which like uh, don't match up as well. Like, yeah. how many abilities are magical? Which you're like, man, I'm fairly certain that's a physical attack. Yeah. Like the balance alone makes no sense. He is so <laughs> small. He struggles to carry it. There's no way that he's able to get like the momentum to swing it. I I hear little people can achieve big things. True. And he's like, you know, he's gonna get bigger. Yeah. Over time, he'll grow up. And Z Freak trying to have a little bit more fun with Inflame DDC. Yeah, she kind of got attacked before by Z by Z Freak and brought down pretty low thanks to that Sada having an easy Hadouken in Slada, bottom lane. They're gonna have another bit of a play around. Yeah, Afu just wants to use his stun because he got an arcane rune. 
but he also doesn't want to commit too hard for it because he's, he's gonna get all guy. venom gushed up and then have a hard time getting away. Yeah, that's really throwing me off that gush level one. But it's okay. With the no crack covered. He can't get much more space because the ogre is uh <coughs> Okay, the ogre's actually backed off now, so he does have the space to hit three. And Monet even using three, getting some deny. And like, gently, he like brushes you with it. Sounds like a rustling, like rustling, uh, bark. Yeah. Like when he, like, stops our attacks. I'm obsessed with this hero, it's just so cool. Mid lane. Super. Gonna get the night up. Now it's good. Al's trying to come mid. Mm. Wrap things up a little bit. Make things easier for your TA. Who is kind of getting crushed in this mid lane so far. Difference of 300 gold so far. Uh, they're, they're waiting to attack. Spirit Cyber is gonna begin. Here comes the Paralyzing Cask. Are they gonna get a good bounce? Oh, it's gonna stick on Kyle. That's and here comes Al's nice move. So quick, so little ring forward. Not even required, but the crush will he connect into limp. There is one lane and one hero we haven't even talked about yet, and it almost feels like like a TC kind of style hero for uh, for an American side. Razor safe lane. That is a name that I haven't heard in quite some time, but yes. TC? Yeah. This Razor has gone relatively uncontested. Tops in net worth. We saw the Razor Omni weird matchup in the other game, uh, the SG one, as the Razor pretty much free farms against it. Like, Omni can't really do too much. For the most part, you're just like spamming out your heals when you can, and Z-Freak, even making this aggressive rotation in, which Doctor doesn't quite have cast yet, though. Oh, no. Trouble for him on bottom lane, and, uh, well, I say that, Monet no longer has his tree, so GG. Yeah, with no tree. But, uh, this paralyzing cast making it very difficult for Z-Freak to at least get the initiation that he wants. He's not losing his creeps to it. Yeah. He's just gonna fire in. Creep shockwave, but yeah. this is the type of hero I, I just love to have complexity pick for Z Freak, something which is able to really dictate the game and showcase his skill as a player. Yeah, where do you rate him, Toby? Z Freak, big fan. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Z Freak. I'd love to see what he could do when he, if he's on like another team at some point too. Uh, hold that thought, man. I I will I will hold that thought for about well I don't know until Swindles dies because they're never gonna disappear. Like, they're never going to separate. Afu, pausing the game. Probably another tech... Kali. Like. I think that this squad, though, can have a lot of success. They probably just, like, haven't quite gotten over that hump yet. Like, because things mm -hmm. are, like, pretty good for them, but... Something, something is wrong. Yeah. Somewhere. I mean, they're a good team. They got uh, fourth, I think, when they played at, uh, what was that event, like Star Ladder? They just like haven't quite put it all together yet, but I don't know if they're that far away from doing so. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of, a uh, lot of tournaments, a lot of room to grow, and they got a lot of time to do it. Yes, sir. So far in this one, it's been a rough start for them. Yeah, like that's, that's also like the, the worst game one you can think of, right? Like you, you've wonderfully shut down a PA, and then you give just one free kill on top, which gives a little bit of strength, but then it's the triple kill that came directly after that. It's like, okay, well, we, we kind of missed our window. We had our IO Tiny. We lost with the IO Tiny. And now LFY are going to play the Tiny against him. It's... I'm hoping mentally complexity can, can stay on top of things. They are a very emotional team. Any team with Kyle, of course, does, does go down that line. They're very good at riding the wave of of, uh, of winning. It's one of those times when I, don't, I never really want to like doubt complexity. It's like the way I used to doubt MVP, and then I learned not to. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> you wouldn't stop giving me crap about that. I mean, because it was just a funny situation, man. <laughs> sometimes you got to be wrong about stuff. And yeah. That was oh, that was godlike. I'm gonna tell that story sometime. That was good. <laughs> You've, you've told that story a couple of times already, I think. Yeah. Set the stage. Just TI4. VP. You know, the Koreans are finally coming up. Toby said, they've got zero chance at beating VP. And I said, Toby, I'm not sure, man. I, I told him, they beat DK in some scrims. And he said, whoever told you that is lying. They've got zero shot. But, you know, miracles happen. Yep.
I always like it's always a double sided edge. Like I'm happy to be wrong, mainly because when I, when it comes to the cast, I actually am legitimately surprised. So emotion equal pure. But the thing is, what both these teams like they don't have. I mean, they've got some standout players, but for the most part, like LFI and Complexity, they they kind of base things more on teamwork. Like both mm -hmm. these sides, they don't have that like superstar player necessarily. They're just yeah. like solid across the board, and they make that work. And I think that's really cool to see, like the value of hard work where it brings teams like this. Like both these teams for me, like mirror in that sense. Um, I mean, so, you, like, like I, I actually look for like the highlight players from both these teams, and then the support players that do the work, and then yeah. it just gels everything else together. Like Afu and Z Freak for me, like they, they just do so much for both of their sides. That's a crazy looking tight set. Yeah. You you would think you'd have back problems, right? I think it's okay. You'd also think you'd have legal problems. I nah. think Bioshock would like their intellectual property back. It's the the weirder thing is is like just the balance of like holding that giant thing up. The tree clearly gravity doesn't like apply very well in the game. <laughs> Well, how else would you do it? Like there was the bug with the, with the tiny with with one of Tiny's cosmetics, where it'd make him look like he was just sliding on his side when he'd move forward, which would be accurate. Yeah, it makes sense. But shouldn't that is that one way to balance the tree? Limp. Well, he's in trouble. Super as well as DDC. Now you got defensive refraction for Super. He's still got more ciphers up his sleeve. Limp under the tower. Did you see? Did you grab the aggro in time? Now the troll trap is here. You've got Z Freak's rotation super. There's Not anything slug. else left in the tank. He'll go down to Z Freak. And the carrying enchantress is on her way. And that's a very big pickup for them. If they get nothing out of that, very unfortunate. But instead, they do get the return kill. It goes on the enchantress player that you did want to see, Z Freak. Uh, now they're going to go for move. God damn, Monet. He's still hitting so hard now with the avalanche toss. So is, is this the counter? When you pick up a tree, your movement speed should be slowed because obviously your weight has increased. No, if anything, it makes you go faster. So you're not really able to see where you're going, so you're just like tipping forward. <laughs> oh. Forward momentum, nice rooting and a heavy amount of damage in for Chessy. Purification will not save in flame there. Very well done so far by Complexity. At the same time, uh, Gold Fleet still in favor of LFY. But this Razor has gone untouched. Yep. And a better hero overall for uh, Chessie to be able to scale. That last game, it felt like it was inevitability for them to lose once the Tiny died. This time around, he's got a hero that can equally scale with his brother. As... They want to go again on bottom. Moo. Oh, Moo. Into the trees. Afu's going to get that clamp off. Not going to happen. Very nice true guys. He makes it away. His Bound. Oh, in flame. Ignite's gonna try and slow him down. So you have the movement speed, he does to get back at 312, reaches the tier 2 tower, and the safety of the coconut of DDC. Super again, that is just a graphical glitch. He is actually spirit siphoning the Templar Assassin. So far, so good. They're gonna make their way around the top. They know that this Omni Knight doesn't Ooh. have repel. He, he actually is stopped for a second. The troll backed up for a half, half moment. I mean, they're trying to avoid the coconut doing the work and Chessy. Oh, he can just reach with that lightning whip. 217 damage a hit. He wants to push this tower right now. He wants to get some free hits on this Radiant tower. He's going to do so. Fort is instantly going to get popped Radiant as in mid. Trap one after another. I actually wonder how much pop damage you can do with your traps now. Oh, another attack. Crete Wave's having a hard time uh, sticking up with Super. Kyle rotation in as well. Yeah, nothing but stealing. Avalanche. Oh, barely connects to Pone. But they can toss the watermelon like a salad. Moo around the tree. Try and duke it out. Won't work. Kyle can't get there in time. They're gonna turn back around on this. Oh Afu, wow! He's got stun in one second. Uh, Monet, well, cut through, picks up a tree, and now slapping in Kyle with the mounting and the paralyzing cast. He'll catch Chessy and Limp. Monet starts his TP out. A little bit more trouble for Afu. He will fall. This will only but once again, forever. they get the better trade of it, grabbing a core at the same time with that tier one towered beam, taking complexity in an okay position as Chessy starting to rack up a lot of gold on himself. I'm gonna start this ancient camp with Limp. But Limp desperately needs something. He yeah. is quite far behind in this game right now. 
Not a lot of gold to his name. Not a lot of farm. Almost a full thousand net worth behind this uh, Death Prophet. In fact, is so. One of his advantages is pretty good at farming up uh, Ancients. Even with two points up in side blades. But he needs, he needs the space to be created for this. And it's a little too obvious when no one is in the mid lane. And how long will it take before LFY just start forcing down buildings and, and restricting this area where they can farm? It's exactly what they're doing as they move towards the top lane under the cover of smoke. Prep work being done by Omni Knight to get in around the back. That was like perfect timing, you're like, when will they go for it as soon as they smoke? <laughs> yeah. And now, Amu, who's absolutely been obliterated oh, smoke in this breaks. game. They know where Z-Freak is. Afu, oh, Z-Freak doesn't have a control. Creepy's got a decent amount of regeneration, but with both Exorcism and Spirit Siphon, that's a hard place to survive. Chessy, though, got a kill. Now, that DDC. bottom lane, they went for the dive on the Witch Doctor, was successful, and they I think they want to continue this with uh, the Death Prophet ult expended Mu. Yeah, but they're going to lose top lane. Like, you've got Exorcism out. Mu just has his TP out, so... A tier 1 tower on the top lane is guaranteed to go down on complexity side. Not so much in the bottom because Razor has no more of that stolen damage. Yeah, and super. Dead. Very good use of his ultimate. Gets a kill. Softens up that tower. He's probably going to want to commit for this one. Yeah. With the TP out on the Tide Hunter, very unlikely that they go for the defense of this. There's also a new catapult wave arriving for LFY. So Inflame is able to just choke up the complexity one. Gold lead just going back and forth based on the towers. As once again it swings in LFY's favor as a result of this top tower being taken, but it's really quite close. It just seems like again, like we find ourselves in this position with complexity where I like obviously it happened later into game one, but it's one hero who has most of the power. And that's coming from the Razor Templar Assassin with absolutely nothing. You've, you've sacrificed on, on multiple lanes to ensure the Razor's had a good start. How does this now pay off? Like, do, you, do you get utility items? Do you get the aggressive... Like, well, he's going stat items with the SMY. Yeah, I think this is one of the better ways to keep up with the Tiny, who does have a very good space uh, base for move speed. And you just need these mid-game items to be able to kite, work your way around. EKB, not ultra effective this game. No blink dagger for Tiny. He goes Shadow Blade. Finds this is going to be a lot of damage. TP supports coming in. There's the Avalanche Toss. Afu needs to close the distance. Look at this speed. And now, toss it forward. Chessy, he is just so damn fast. He's going to toss No! Oh, he tosses in Afu! Well, this is why you don't need a blink dagger. You've, you've got yourself. Incoming. Don't tell the elf. Radiance top under attack. Gotta keep up with movie references. Tiny is Aragorn. Yeah, okay. I like that. That joke's never as good when, when you have to explain it. <laughs> then what's the joke good, Toby? To begin with? <laughs> it was, just not to you. <laughs> joke was on Razor, though, as he gets squashed by the weight of the Slardar. Oh, now it's Moose turn. Invis, Ravage available, but it's difficult to kill on Super, they need a lot of extra health to come in. And Super, Spirit Siphon, one charges up, and here comes your Paralyzing Maybe Curse, get really nice Malatech Super! He lives through this! For all oh, the no. damage, TDC's death one! Chessy will pop to Maladic, Afu will take the experience, but the ultimate coconut! Chessy just respawned for that, Toby. He just <laughs> came back into the game, consecutive deaths. Not the kind of start that they were exactly hoping for as complexity. Oh, that hurts. Oh, boy. Dying back to back like a core, especially in that fashion. That was supposed to be a very easy kill on the Death Prophet. You can see it again where there's, with that start from Mu. They got the lockdown stuns, but he, he got his one charges off before Kyle actually hit him with the, with the blast. Yeah, and he even turns around for the second Spirit Siphon, barely keeps him alive. That final tick, 11 HP was how low he got. Even gets... The kill on Mu to add insult mm. to injury. DDC, such a great support player. Right time, right place. His, his disruptor from game one was perfect. Yeah. And his... now you're seeing him again with with probably like the double the double ulti hero. Yeah. And now they're making their way around to mid. Monet has that tree available. Shadow blade it up. Got him. 
purification, <laughs> amplification death. damage is just, yeah. Third well, death. In, <laughs> welcome to Dota. Yeah, third death in as many minutes, I think. Like yeah, he, it may even be less than that. Like, it may even be, like, in two. Considering how fast it's all moved. And despite that, I mean, gold lead is not really that favorable for LFY. Mm -hmm. Everybody is still doing a decent job of keeping up. I mean, that's largely on the fact that this Witch Doctor has zero net worth. But with this Roshan, things are going to look a little bit different here. Super going to pop the Exorcism for it with the Amplified Damage. Not a whole lot of complexity can do, even if they were aware of this. And they yeah. are. They were sitting under a trap when they walked like, in there. You want to jump in, however. Like, you got a Blink Dagger over on a Slaughter who's just creating space. Amplify is on limp. We'll crush him. It's, it's more distraction. And Alfu can quickly get back now with his, with the new changes for him just to well be even slipperier on wet. When you make that aggressive move forward, Toby, everyone thinks that there are people behind you. Yeah. It's like, wait, were they baiting Roshan? Monet? Doesn't have his blink dagger, he's only got that shadow blade to work with, but knows exactly where Z I sort of knows exactly where Z Freak is. Oh, cut the wrong throw throwback, but it won't matter. <laughs> That's the observer ward. Actually, was it? No, that was, that was the, the Dire Observer Ward there. Radiant one was a little bit further north. And that's only one level of Untouchable. So, Tiny still swings pretty hard and pretty fast. That is not a very tanky Enchantress that we're used to seeing. And Inflame is starting to catch back up now as he gets gone on limp with the Blink Dagger, makes his way forward. But this feels more like a desperation attack. That's extra help. You've, you've got him rotating over, but that stun is not going to be in range. Inflame. Completes the TP before Kark can get enraged for the Fire Blast. Yeah, look at the cast range on that level 1 Fire Blast without the cast range talent. It's so unbelievably low. Another failed attempt for Complexity, who is still doing a very good job of keeping up as a result of just harming a lot of these Ancients. They're still shoving in the waves quite aggressively. Yeah. But it's, it's getting out of control when LFY are the ones dictating the pace of this game. And the Razor just can't stand. Like, we, we talked about, like, how great the start was for Razor. What then happens? Like, what items do you buy? What do you transition into? You dive back to back three to or back to back to back. And that, that, that talk of transition doesn't exist anymore. It's like, how do I not die? Well, at bottom, tower. And Moo can't stop it. Who? I mean, we saw earlier today, it felt like Tidehunter was unkillable, but this Tidehunter... Now he's very killable. Fairly easily. Well, he's just got no, like, like stat items. Like, Raindrops is the best protection he's got at the moment. Yeah. In the other game that we saw, of course, he was quite farmed. Had a full pipe completed on himself. Not easy to take down whatsoever. But in this game, like you said, one of the easier heroes to deal with. Really well uh, moved by, by LFY there. They realize that the attack is coming in from complexity. They actually put an Observer Ward down, I believe, when Complexity smoked. That's the Observer Ward just north of the of the Ancients of Complexity. Right, so starting to get into a fight with Moo. But pace of the game slowing down oh, a little bit here. Don't reveal yourself in mid. Oh, he's dead. That's not for certain. <laughs> they had two coming from the north and one coming from the front. There was a... All right, there wasn't. <laughs> I, I even love the fact, like, like you have Z, like, you have Z Freak with his creep there. He doesn't even do it. It's like straight death oh, ward. Oh, Afu misses on the blink. Dyer's doesn't yeah. quite know where Limp is. As Limp melds, hides, should be able to get out of here as Afu is still kind of looking around, seeing if there's an opportunity here to be made, but there isn't. It's like the only safe place for, for the TA to be is just to go into LFY's jungle. Meanwhile, Kyle, like the second someone reveals himself in lane, they have to be worried. Like blink initiation, toss initiation. If you could amplify it, then any of those stats, any of that extra armor you think you have to survive, it just doesn't exist. And Complexity have no answer to that. I say, I say amplified because we're going old school. Mist or whatever it is now. Oh, there goes our food. That's one way to get rid of it. Yeah, corrosive haze. Yes, and a very easy kill for them. But same time complexity they need more than that they need more than just the four positions slardar the high ground though is taken by lfy i think they're going to back out of this area it's still a little bit scary for them to take these fights you do have exorcism as well as death ward back up again but there's no reason why you don't just regroup 
keep the lanes pressured out. But how, how far do you go? Like, do you just keep taking tier 2 towers? Do you try and force the fight while you have the Aegis the Immortal? I think so. I don't know if uh, you need to force anything too much, though. It's still scary. Like, if you get ravaged into the right kind of fight, the game can kind of reset. And in these uh, two-game series, it's very important that, you know, you clean up the game, make sure that you're going to win it. It's not like these best of threes where it's like, okay, guys, we, we messed up in game two. Let's kind of reset. We're still the better team than them. You only get two chances to prove it. Well, here comes LFY, smoked up. Afu uh, and DDC. Support boys, raid hit kill off that Razor. Paralyzing task we've thrown out, and the Baldic, they have enough damage, and he'll pop from this. The on killing spree with the exorcism. Oh, they now they fight Kyle. It's, it's like, it's the cheese on the pizza right now. It just makes everything so tasty. Limp adding pressure to the bottom lane. Half food. Does TP in? Yeah, he'll get the crush off, cancelling out the TP. Oh no, he's amped up, and there's a tiny hunting him from behind. Limp the cuts no through the trees. Land. There's your avalanche. It burns through so many defensive reaction charges and Z Freak. He attacks from the tree lines, but there's not a lot he could really do. Defensive refraction Blink back one. up for Limp, and he blinks. But Half food, the toss. Oh, there's no way to escape. How do you run away from this? Death by a thousand cuts. To well, splinters in, in this case. Yep. He throws that purification on for good measure as move. Haste it up, but be dispelled immediately by that Yule Scepter. And I think he's just reluctant to use his Ravage because Toby, if you use a Ravage once in this game and it fails mm -hmm. and you lose the fight, then there goes a lot of your hope. Like that's the only thing I think holding LFY back from just like straight up going for it. No, oh, it's gonna kill him off the old-fashioned way then. Move. Okay, maybe not. Kraken is too good. Yield Scepter up. DDC's got Paralyzing Cast available. Not tosses it out. Now the Valedict once more. Again, Corrosive Haze. They can just chain these really low cooldown and low mana cost abilities to get the picks when complexity are out of position. Now no Ravage for 42 seconds because no Tidehunter for that long. Don't even need Exorcism. That's even scarier. Maybe that's the other reason too. You understand the second you lose the Tide Ravage, then you lose high ground. If yes. you if Exorcism is up, uh, and then that Aegis Demol is also available, like it's it's mid racks. And complexity aren't even coming back. They're actually letting their mid racks fall. Templar Assassin is nearby, but they they take the trade off on the top. There's absolutely no chance that they can fight that without their Titan Hunter. They oh. couldn't fight it. They jump in. No. He said no chance, but they're giving it a crack anyway. Lip's almost down. Lip is down. He won't buy back. They've already lost their melee racks. They just need some kind of consolation prize. But Arthur was that box of chocolate. He'll go down to Chessie. But you've lost your mid lane of racks. You claimed a tier 1 tower up on top and some decent damage to the tier 2. But your TA died for a slaughter on top. Yeah, not gonna feel good about that trade. Well, maybe you are, because they are. The nature of the game is they're down nine thousand gold. <laughs> yeah. Trading a core for a support doesn't seem that bad anymore. And you didn't blow Ravage to to get the counter kill. Yeah, you probably get another attempt at this, but it's got to be a good Ravage, Toby. Yeah, it's it's gonna be around Roshan as well. They need they need LFY in a choke point, yeah. and if they give both Aegis and Cheese over. To LFY in the next fight, then it looks to be done. Like, you're gonna ravage pop somebody fantastic, but unless you got like 500 billion stolen damage in chest, you aren't gonna win that fight. Now, Chessie gets initiated on move. There's your ravage for Monet. He was repelled up. No he dying. didn't actually get touched at all, but Moon touched all over. Two heroes down for complexity, and now tossed forward in the Omni Knight, slowing down Z3. DJ Aura, reduce the range, doesn't matter when you got tossed, you're right on top of them. And now the follow up into Ogre Majai through the layers of fat which protects him from the cold. Arfu, ah, such a quick fish, right behind the Ogre Majai, and Super coming in with the Exorcism. Four heroes from Complexity here will He's die. Kyle is making tight. him work for it though. But the push is moving towards the bottom tier two tower. So Arfu and DDC can work together to kill off Kyle. They're unless he can deny himself to something. Anything? Another stun is going to land. The trap is there too. That's oh, also going to connect. It's going to make things a little bit more difficult as Kyle. <laughs> what is this run? I have no idea. There's two heroes that are just slowly chasing him. Nobody... You know, you know, eventually it works against him though. Cause Afu... He's out of mana now. Yeah, okay. He's, he's, he's out of mana and Afu is out of range. So we can't keep any ability on him. So the blink dagger comes off cooldown. And he closes the distance and kill happens. But I could admit it. I could admit it wasted. Yeah, they did. I mean, that was sick. 
he resets things a little bit. They were trying to go for that bottom push right after, but they were unable to do so. Maybe they still make it work anyways, but Super doesn't have that exorcism anymore. Dyer's bottom shrine. <laughs> LFY would love a pick up before they go up again. But you do actually have that timer, right? Like, you just wait for the next... Oh, for sure. You can for, wait for, for the, the next. next Roshan. Yeah. You have Slardar Ram. Roshan's always a possibility for your team. And you do it quickly, too. Mm -hmm. I think in the last game, it looked a little bit awkward um, for Complexity because they themselves had some difficulties going for Roshan. Yep. But LFY, they've got no issues doing it. Team of Slardar is always going to have the ability to do it. Did I just read? Did I just see that wrong? Was that a, a heart coming onto the tiny, or was that death prophet? It's tiny. Yeah, tiny has a heart lined up. Yeah, it's got a up. He just was like, if I don't get bursted, this fight kind of ends. And we saw how difficult it was for them to get the burst, anyways. That was a pretty good ravage. Mm -hmm. But even with that, they weren't able to kill anybody. It just seems so sad that like, like you get the ravage off, but you understand like someone's gonna be repelled. And that case was the tiny. Like, Tani was free just to beat the crap out of everybody, and now in flames, caught out, complexity. Ah, they have the damage. Very nice kill for them. And now it's going to be complexity who finally get a core kill. Desperately needed that to make something happen on the map right now. It's Kobe. Yeah, they're coming for the tier one. Money. Momentum. Yeah, every anything counts at this point. Yep. You're, when you're down 12,000 gold and you're not even sure that you're going to win the late game, uh, it's pretty important that you win these mini engagements at least. Seems like a fantastic lane as well to to get that with the with the movement of the shrine a little bit further back. Complexly remove that front TP position of LFY to contest this Roshan. Now this is the moment they fight for. Chessie does not have his storm available. She just got super comes in close. Ravage removed. Catching the back line. Have they got enough damage to kill that death prophet? No! She'll get the yours and drop the power of the cast. Bouncing through Roshan. Chessie will have to fight back into this fight, but super in DDC. They're cleaning up the rest of complexity. Roshan is low, and they're going for the mid. Afu, he wants limp. Meld, hiding. They know exactly where he is. Ping, 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 ping. Silence, and now Bragan bring him out of it. No. Meld, toss. How many AoE abilities have you got left? Crush? Okay, you got enough of them. You can throw them. They finally bring him down. Oh, they got more. They actually root a Chessie. This will be a dieback from Chessie. Tossing in Super. Closing the distance, and that should be the game. 70 seconds without the raising. You don't even need Roshan now, and they're going for the tier four towers. They understand they got this game firmly shot in the bag. Ignore the pips on the counterboard. LFY, they got game one, and they're looking to take this series 2-0. Yeah, without a buyback available on the Razor, a little bit too much momentum loss as Link is gonna buy back. There's no Ravage. They're still going to try to make the play forward as Afu is going to be their target, but nobody being brought down right now. Boy. Z Freak, if they can defend this, if they can make it waste time, Lip can kill off Afu in the back lines. Kyle, he's fighting underneath his own fountain. He's trying to survive this, but Monet, he doesn't give two hoots on that tiny. He'll catch out more. They've got the Paralyzing Car Scout. TA still on the run. Moon trying to reduce that damage with the Anchor Smash, but it doesn't stop Monet with his Avalanche Toss combination. Four Hero is gone, and so is the game for Complex. The LFY. It was a wonderful showing in the second half of game one. And game two, it was a beautiful display. This was very dominant. 27 minutes, a very short one. LGD absolutely cleaning house with complexity. They're saying to themselves, like, we'll show you how tiny is. Like, yep. we'll show you that we're the team that's gonna make tiny look OP. Yep. Not only did they kill off the IO Tiny, they then made the Tiny work just by yeah, himself. They're like, no, this hero's fine, it was just yeah. you guys. Yeah, we didn't need a blue <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty savage, man. But the man who is the king of savage...